And I would like to address our audience. We have a few viewers here. Thank you so much for dropping by. And um, I'm also seeing familiar names. Thank you so much for dropping by. And uh, thank you so much for your support again and again. Uh, to all live viewers, thank you for um, you know being with us, um, especially our regular viewers. And I hope that uh, however long that you choose to, to be with us in uh, point of view, tonight's point of view, you'll gain something out of it. And as usual, we invite you to be part of the session by asking questions and also um, share your perspective around the topics tonight by typing that in this comment section. Okay, so welcome to Point of View series. Good evening, everyone. Tonight is our 53rd episode. <laughs> My goodness, right? And um, okay, perhaps for those who are new, the Point of View series is basically a live online talk show where we invite guests to share their knowledge, experiences, and wisdom or perspective with our audience. And Monday episode, as usual, is about men's brief. And nothing to do with underwear, as usual, the series will talk about matters that are not usually discussed or openly talk about men's issues or challenges. Special. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and nothing to do with uh, Omar's and Hassan's undergarment, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, special for tonight, as you can see on the screen, for the second time on Point of View series, but first time on uh, Men's Brief, as you can see, we have Mr. Hassan Nudin Saidin. Thank you so much, Hassan. Oh, thank you for inviting me back. Yeah, it, it's and been then... uh, almost three months to the day because it was 20th March. Today is... 17th August, so almost exactly. three months. Time flies. Time yeah. flies, right? And um, yeah, well, let me also again and again reiterate the purpose of Point of View series is basically to enlighten each other and hopefully along the line of getting the last bulb moment so that we all uh, perhaps could act upon for the betterment of ourselves and others surrounding us. Okay, special on men's brief, I would like to share the big picture thinking around the session. We would like to convey the idea around insight on how men might think and therefore we women, we know how to understand them, not control them, all right? <laughs> and then also the session is to send some form of messages on uh, to all men out there, if you're facing men's issues, Rest assured that you are not alone. There are others who might be also facing the same issue, right? So without further ado, let's introduce ourselves. Um, okay, maybe let's start with Omar. Introduce yourself, Omar. Yes, hi everybody, good evening. Uh, if you've been following us, welcome back. Like Jack said, this is our 53rd episode, so we're way past, we're past the midpoint. Uh, we're pretty happy about that. Yeah, so, um, I call myself a conversation coach, and uh, that um, uh, came about because when I was in corporate, I noticed that uh, conversation was a key skill that uh, would propel people forward or help hold them back. So when I left corporate to do training, I started to focus on uh, communication skills and um, helping people develop the confidence to speak up in English and how to articulate the ideas better. Uh, and I've been a uh, um, a, a willing part, uh, st student, uh, if you can call it that, uh, in studying uh, how people communicate. So I watch a lot of uh, videos, I listen to a lot of uh, speeches, uh, or just people communicating on air to see what makes them um, better communicators. Yeah. So let me just uh, pass this on to Hassan. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. the, the last time I was here three months ago, I gave a similar short introduction just like Omar, but if I may, can I have your permission to give a longer introduction? And uh, hopefully the viewers too will give me that permission. I can see at least one name there, Lavender. Lavender, L Lavender. How do you pronounce the word? Lavender. Lavender Tequila. Tequila is right, right? Yeah. That's a nice name. I hope uh, Lavender and the rest can say yes 
or something, giving me permission to give a longer introduction. Okay, Hassanuddin Saidin is the name. Uh, so the short name is Hassan. But what do I do now? Well, I, I might go with the label. Uh, recently, I changed in my LinkedIn profile that I'm a guiding light for learners. So that covers about yeah, the things that I do, like coaching, uh, facilitating, uh, training, or even speaking. Uh, so, you know, this has been a journey of five years. Uh, I'm right now at the stage of being clear and confident of where I am in being the learning guide, you know, or the guiding light for learners. Uh, like I have coached uh, confidently CEOs, managers, entrepreneurs, all the way to students, and I've helped people of all walks of life, uh, either for free or for fee through the, the skills of coaching, training, facilitating, and speaking. Uh, so pretty happy, very happy, because in the context of the family, for example, this house, uh, we've been living here for about 30 years. We, we built this house, designed our house, and had it constructed. Uh, I, I have one wife, <laughs> Marcilla, and uh, children, uh, two children plus one. Let me explain. Uh, Hannah is in her 30s, so is Hadi. So that's a daughter and a son. So the plus for them would be Hannah is married, so they are adults. Hadi is married, and whoa, the bonus is Hadi has two sons, so I have two grandsons. And the, the plus factor in the family is we also have a sister of Masila, a sister of my wife, uh, about 15 years difference from Hannah and Hadi, but uh, it was from another mother. So technically, she's a sister of Masila, but she is also an adopted daughter of mine. So she's in her 20s already. They're, they're doing well. Uh, Hadi, the second one, is in Penang, working for an American multinational. His wife is a consultant in the IT industry. Uh, the kaka or the elder sister, Hana, whoa, uh, she is married to Rizal, who is an accountant and auditor in a big uh, company in Malaysia. But Hana herself, her specialty is uh, biotechnology sciences and she's now a uh, business development manager for a German chemical, industrial chemical company. So uh, the, the, the third one, Amina, who is in her 20s, she teaches or she works in a nursery for infants and kids. So we, we're all adults now, uh, just Masila and I are left in this empty nest. Uh, so I converted many of the rooms. For example, this used to be Hadi's bedroom, which is now my office. Yeah? Uh, so things are good. Yeah? The family has been gelling well together over the last five years. Uh, problems come, problems go, problems uh, arise, problems are solved. Uh, we do lots of events and activities uh, in the extended family would be the center of the universe where extended family will come for parties birthday parties and whatnot uh, so in, in my professional life i'm pretty focused now i know where i need to go uh, so, so 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 it's a life of yeah nice pace the dream the dream that, that, that i wanted to have uh, it has arrived to this level Am I rich? Well, rich enough. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't always this way, though. Back five years ago when I left corporate, um, what, what am I going to do? Just before my final month in my last corporate position, and I'd been serving in corporate for more than 30 years, a few companies, I said that, hmm, because of my nature, why don't I become a trainer? So I called up Jeffrey Tan, a colleague of by now 17 years. Hey Jeff, boleh cari makan? Can I make a living out of this? And Jeff says, yo bro, I've been doing this for a few years and you get by man, you can, you can. But let me bring you to another friend of mine to give you better advice. Uh, who's that? Let, let's go to Juara. So we, we went to Juara, who is Rosihan, uh, Juara Baharudin, he too with me, we'd known each other by now for 17 years, 
and he said hey Hassan good to see you but you know you want to be a trainer but you I see that you can be a trainer you can be a coach you can be a facilitator you can be a speaker you can be an author wow uh, unless people tell us we may not know our talent so I, I felt good but I felt confused what, what am I gonna do so I, I went on to understudy Juara yeah, bless the man yeah, there, there were lots of learnings I had with him especially in training and coaching and facilitating and 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 and, and muddle and, and, and struggle my own way in the first few years uh, that's it it was a struggle because I was about to become a statistic. Uh, what do I mean? People of my standing having come out of corporate, we might have, you know, in Malaysia, we have the Employee Provident Fund or EPF, which is the mandatory savings. The statistics says, the EPF people said this, uh, they see that many people would get broke from the savings of EPF within three to five years. And at first I thought, nah, nah, that's not me. Uh, I have lots to do. Uh, I, can, uh, I can supplement my savings with more income. But uh, one of the first things I did for getting support from family, I go to Rizal, remember? He's an auditor accountant. He does the spreadsheet. Uh, he, 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 uh, he's like my financial planner and advisor. Papa, the way that your lifestyle is going now, you're going to get broke in three years, Papa. Hmm. So we said we could make some adjustments, but the worst or the best case I could see you know, with that trend of the first couple of years of income versus expenses was I might go broke in five years. So why is this? You know, coming out of corporate, uh, we thought that we are successful in that life. But now being a solopreneur, entrepreneur is a whole different game that actually I was out of my comfort zone. You know, I was going to be broke, worse of the best case, five years. And what will I do then? Do I sell this house? Uh, do I, you know, the worst case, I could get my adult family members, my children to support me. Oh, no. <laughs> no way, man. The, the, the man's ego. How can uh, this man of 30 years corporate be supported uh, by the family members if I get broke? No, no. So, so I, I wasn't focused. Eh? Uh, Juara said five things to do. Eh? I, I had talent too. I, I was dabbling in all. Uh, I was seeing that my income was less than my expenses. So that, that prophecy of five years getting broke was indeed coming through. But why should this be? I'm, I'm supposed to be a great corporate man with great project management, strategy, uh, having learned all that in business and in corporate. Uh, I, I was very efficient. Uh, I mean, Omar knows this of me. I'm so structured. Yeah. I, 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 I ascribe by this uh, David Allen called Getting Things Done. By then, I was an eight-year practitioner. I was very efficient uh, in time management and whatnot. But here's a problem. Yeah. Efficient or effective? So was I being efficient doing the wrong things uh, that I could get broke? five years on. So it seemed, so it seemed. Yeah. I, I was being very efficient, not knowing whether the things I was doing was focused enough, right enough, getting me to that destination that I want to be financially free even five years after corporate. Then a friend of mine, you know, I, in, in getting support, not just family support, I also have Joara as a support, Omar as a support, Jacqueline as a support, family members as a support, friends as a support. One of the friends who, who, who was a GTD, Getting Things Done trainer with me, uh, he is Cyril Jegu, an international man, a Frenchman uh, living in Hong Kong or Philippines or Australia or UK. I, I, can't, I can't track where he is. He said, ah, son, uh, there's another way of doing longer term planning. Uh, have you heard of uh, doing it uh, in a system called uh, Best Year Yet? I said, no. So go try it. Aside. So I bought this book uh, six years ago. It's browned out now. Uh, meticulously followed 
the worksheets that are found in it and oh, ah now there is a sense of direction now there is a way to avert that five year being broke Cyril being the good man he is Cyril Jagu said son let me let me coach you uh, do you know our son uh, what you did in the worksheets you could put it in an app huh <laughs> that's an app for everything I said so he introduced me to the web app I transcribed uh, my, 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 my my entries into that so that Hassan he says uh, with a, with this app uh, we can help you monitor yourself better because it's not just a one-time plan you got a destination how are you gonna be monitoring it so Cyril said let me be your coach here yeah? ad hoc I wouldn't charge you anything for it uh, let's let you better follow this system, my son. I did better than that. Huh? I not only followed the system; I signed up, you know, for being a coach of that system. So I went through a five, six month, uh, three, four months period of online uh, being mentored by uh, a, a, a very senior, certified, best year yet coach. Her name is. Genie Charbonneau so not only now I can live the system I could also help people with the system so I did better than just getting help from Cyril Cyril was pleased and after my training and become and after having become a certified coach I got went on to implement the system year in year out year in year out so it's been uh, five six seven years of implementing that system of best year yet and not only that I hired Jeannie my trainer uh, to to do that uh, reflection with me every month so uh, the, the, the success has been because from being a ship that is very efficient you know the engines are running fine to now a ship with a direction and having a plan every year that every year is a best year you know when I start the year it may be the best year yet but at the end of the year of every five years uh, every of the five six years it has been better and better and better so every year is the best year for me so uh, with, with that yeah that that has what has made me become at peace with myself uh, knowing uh, the directions that I wanted in five years has been achieved the directions that I want the coming year I know and I'm focused and I do monthly reflections I do uh, quarterly discussions with my wife uh, and, and and we know where we're going uh, that's the other part of family support I not only also provide the support to my wife uh, but even to my kids there could be uh, I wouldn't call them formal coaching sessions with my skills but I, I would use elements of coaching in my interaction with them. For example, with my wife, we'd go on <laughs> quarterly retreats, uh, just doing reflection and planning for the past period and for the coming period. Uh, so, so that keeps us going. Uh, that, that, that is me providing support as well as later Omar and Jack, uh, you will see that me providing support to the family is in comparison of me receiving support from the family uh, is less yeah uh, receiving is more than giving support uh, so receiving support has also made me successful uh, i get more support than give support <laughs> so that's a long introduction that i got your permission to tell thank you for your listening <laughs> oh, wow Re that's really impressive and um I sort of like know a bit about, about those, but uh, not in detail. And tonight I got to know more of uh, Hassan. Yeah, but uh, let's also uh, go in depth about our, on our topic for tonight. So perhaps to start on this, uh, over to you, Omar. You are muted, Omar. <laughs> yeah, there was a connection breakdown earlier. Um, that was a good prelude uh, to our topic, Hassan. Um, when we, when Jack and I discussed this topic, um, which is about the importance of family support, uh, and the first person we thought about was Hassan. And I, I think the background Hassan gave about um, his background, his family background, um, is a is a good um, 
is a is a good canvas to work on right now, right? Uh, so yeah, so we wanted to talk to Hassan about this because Hassan has a way of um, rallying his family together uh, uh, every now and then, as he. Um, uh, you know, every family has things that they go through. And what Hassan does is uh, he doesn't leave it to chance. He actually uh, uh, regularly meets with them, <laughs> like a corporate guy, in a way. He regularly <laughs> meets with them, and um, he has sessions with them. You know, and um, and uh, and the other side of it is, uh, is also that uh, knowing Hassan, you know, when you have issues, you also turn to your family for support. You know? So he's, uh, he, he goes both ways. He gives support at the same time. He also seeks support from his family. So I think the first thing we want to understand is um, to help Hassan share with us some of his best practices that he um, does with his family. Because, um, you know, I have to admit, I don't do what he does. I, I don't think most men do what Hassan does. And, uh, and I just think that it's a very interesting thing for us to listen to uh, what Hassan does with his family to keep them um, on, a, um, on an even keel, so to speak. Yeah, Hassan, so maybe you can share with us, what are some of the practices that you do? Uh, there's two parts that I mentioned. One is when you seek help, and the other one is when you provide help or counseling, right? So let's start with the part where you provide the counseling first, provide that, that support first, right? Um, and then we go on later on when you, when you seek help. I think that's, that's, a, that's quite a common thing. When, when you know, somebody needs help, they turn to their wife or their family. That's quite common. Uh, but having uh, regular sessions with the family is something that uh, I've, I've never really uh, come across. <laughs> you know, just like recently you had a um, couple of months back, you had a session um, somewhere in um, Slango, right? Um, by the resort, at the resort, you guys had a family get together and you went through some um, coaching stuff, some brainstorming stuff. Tell us about that. Yeah. Thank you, Omar. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, let's go back to something else before we go to what I do and how I do it. Uh, it's got to do with why am I doing all this? The big why. Uh, the, the simple reason is for me, uh, even you know, in, in my background, I, I came from a family of eight siblings. Uh, my wife came from a family of eight siblings too. So being in a family environment and regarding family as the center of the universe is given. So it is so important that the family be a strong unit. So we believe this, I believe this, and I'm sure there are enough opinions out there to say that the family is the central unit to make the whole community work, to make a state work, even a nation work or the world goes round and round and round because of the basic unit of the family. So you know, it, it is something that until I say it, eh, I could be a fish in the water not realizing I'm in the water, but I'm saying it out loud. There's nothing like family uh, that, that, that makes every one of us in my family strong. Uh, where, whether they were still kids that I and my wife provided a lot, or now that they are adults, that it is almost equal giving and taking and receiving uh, it is the family unit that, that 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 becomes the foundation of our behavior my behavior uh, outside into the companies i work with the community i deal with so th that's that's an important start uh, but but when you say my role uh, uh, and especially in the context of men's brief my role especially in the early days when the kids were small, it's actually, I, I don't know what percentage it is. There could be some percentage that I'm the lead role player in providing the support to the rest of the immediate family. There could be my wife playing the re lead role, that then I become the follower role. Or there could be joint roles of equal responsibility. Uh, th that helps you understand that uh, in, in the early days, providing uh, the, 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 the role play from my side of providing is pretty easy, pretty traditional. It's the financial support, for example. Yeah? Uh, I'm the, I was the breadwinner because my wife, after having spent 10 years of working, we just saw fit that she stopped work 
because there's enough problems of trying to get helpers sending to nurseries uh, we, and kindergartens and halfway uh, or transition centers so we decided after her 10 years of work she will be the one you know she spent years driving the kids to work or you know part of the part part part, part of the role will be if i'm going to work i, I send the kids to work but uh, th this is common uh, but even when we do stuff with the kids, for example, they have their activities, extracurricular activities on weekends or night tuition, uh, what, it, what was 100% was, it was joint, you know. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't have to be that I send them to music school alone or Masila sends them to music school alone. It was 99.9% .9 that we sent them together in the car. The only times that, that we don't do that is because I'm at work. But at other times when we both are available, uh, that, that, that the importance of that family unit meant we do it together. So that's an example of uh, joint responsibility and joint provision. Uh, but as they grow older, uh, the provision of support uh, changes. Uh, so, so if, like you said, that the kids are big and they are already earning their income, uh, Omar was asking or saying that I, uh, hinting that I was also providing consultations or counselling to my kids. Uh, not really, and somewhat really, because uh, you you cannot put jargon into it. You know, once you put jargon like counselling, consultation, coaching, then <laughs> then I would be going as if I'm wearing a coach's hat. You know? yeah. So I, I like the elements of coaching as a phrase, uh, which was introduced to me by our good friend, Juara. When we do such stuff, uh, uh, the, the, the other equivalent example are managers and leaders in company. They are not certified coaches, but they, are, uh, they better have coaching elements, skills of coaching elements. To, to work with their direct reports. So similarly for a parent, yeah, I, I would say I would have used coaching elements. So th this could be, uh, you know, some things like Hadi, uh, let's have a regular lunch uh, you know, once in two, three weeks, especially when there are matters arising. So meticulous, meticulously, yeah, I would stick to the schedule then. Uh, there are things that Hadi, the son, could discuss together with Mama and Papa, but there are things that, hey, this is man to man, so I'd have a separate lunch with him. And if there are issues and matters arising that I need to address with my daughter, uh, I would have that couple of lunches. And when, when we do talk, uh, rest assured, Omar, I don't become a coach, you know, with a coaching methodology. Uh, we, uh, we are we are intelligent enough to adapt and uh, questioning techniques and listening techniques and suggesting so, techniques. So are these appointments as um, on a regular basis or on an ad hoc basis or as and when um, it arises? Uh, it depends. If if there are bigger events or bigger issues to look into, then they become regular to a certain point of three, four, five meetings. But uh, if things have subsided and things are normal, then uh, we meet it. We meet each other just at family events. Yeah. So, so, so that's with the children. Uh, okay. But, uh, but I think you were interested also. Sorry, you were going to say something, Omar. Yeah. So coming back to that question of you putting, uh, getting the family together, and um, and then you were running some kind of a session with them. Um, Perhaps you could share that with us because that, that uh, uh, you know, uh, piques my curiosity. What is it that you guys do there? Are you planning a family uh, occasion or were you addressing some family issues or, uh, or are you just planning forward? Well, what is it that you guys do? Well, uh, let, let me take the example of me receiving support. Yeah? Uh, just like anybody, there could be issues, problems, decisions to be made that if I think alone, I may not be wise enough. Uh, like I said earlier, I also have a support system of Omar, Jacqueline, Juara, this friend, that friend, uh, this colleague, or someone I know in France, or someone I know in Australia, 
but there is nothing like in the end because the family unit is a central unit the biggest decisions i need to make in my life i have a term for that i have a family council c-o-u-n-c-i-l it's a council out there and this council doesn't have to meet formally but we need to have a, a platform or a situation that we discuss together uh, so there had been times that in the last five years especially when i needed to make cost correction or changes in my career which affects income and affects my day-to-day -day life i would convene <laughs> it could be over dinner meeting and hey guys this is what papa intends to do what do you think yeah. uh, so for me receiving support of big decisions in my career i convene special meetings and it could be one meeting or two meetings uh, so that has happened about three times in the five years uh, but if i need also to receive support and guidance for something that i'm not good at but yet uh, i'm facing a big problem uh, the, the family is one of the support system that i go to and in fact one of the first support system uh, components that i go to uh, here's an example remember i said that Rizal is also an accountant, so he's good at spreadsheets and, and interpolations, extrapolations, and counting and putting things in order. Uh, there was once when I was helping a community with building, or in fact, completing a mini mosque or a surau, we call it. Uh, the community elected me as a residence association chairman such that I they think I'm good enough to be able to run this project and abandon Surau or Mini Mosque because the developer went bankrupt. So the structure was up, the roof was up, it wasn't painted, there were no doors, no framed windows, no electricity, the grass was growing wild and we had one more month to the fasting month of Ramadan and the community said let's build this and complete this. So they, they made me the president or the chairman such that I could lead. So I, I created the project team of the community members. We collected money and through my network, I managed to collect something like, whoa, I thought it would be 5,000 ringgit, but I managed to get people to donate anything from 200 ringgit to 10,000 ringgit and it amassed to something like 80 plus thousand. So we finished the project. I used all my capabilities of project management, subcontractor management, uh, negotiation, meeting the authorities with my committee members, and wham, when the fasting month ended, uh, the, the, the intention of the community to have the ideal fitri, the Hari Raya, the Eid uh, prayer was fulfilled. Great. But one month later, in the WhatsApp group, they will say, what did Hassan do with all the money? How do we know the 80, 90,000 he didn't embezzle? And then wham came another allegation, an allegation, allegation, allegation. And they called for an emergency meeting of the community. Let's get it out of Inche Hassan. What did he do with the money? I was, oh my God, here I am trying to do good and all I get is all these allegations tell you it was so stressful uh, to the point that you know when I get stressed uh, it went to the point of I almost oh, vomited you know, I was so sick and stressed with all these allegations they were saying that you know uh, we'll fight till the death and find out what's wrong well, where the money went on so what did I do one of the things I did was Rizal, can you help me? Yeah. Masila, my wife, and I said, Rizal, can you help Papa? So we, we, she, he created the report as if it's an audit-free report. Simplified it. So that, uh, and then he could attend the meeting together with me that I presented to the main committee uh, to the point that uh, uh, they were, either they didn't understand, understand the report or they found it, you know, yeah. Uh, all the receipts were in order. Uh, Rizal, Hana, myself, and Masila would have spent 
three nights of putting receipts together and he created a spreadsheet he put a format and then we pre I presented and the committee had to accept it and so I was free of the allegations and and I could I could then resign from them from the association because the mission has been accomplished yeah, the surah was complete so 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 this is yeah, without Rizal being there using his skill I wouldn't have known what to do I would have probably landed in hospital with depression because here I am I've never faced such challenges in my comfortable life nobody has slandered or you know fitnah me or or try to point a gun at me figuratively speaking of course I was so damn depressed and in a hole but uh, the family came together to help me and then we got out of that so that's an example from one family member uh, what else Omar? I got carried away there yeah we're still curious to know what what uh, what transpired when you uh, when you hold a session with the family um, yeah I, I can appreciate the um, you know the, those kind of challenges it must have been quite traumatic for you when your uh, allegations are thrown at you but um, and you're fortunate enough to have a, a family to rally behind you and support you that's really great um, and uh, at the same time you also counsel the family uh, you know uh, uh, during difficult times and uh, on top of that you also have regular sessions with them uh, am I understanding that correctly I think you do right you yeah. have uh, every now and then you get together and in fact you have a, a year-end session with your wife <laughs> things like that where you go off and plan the next year and stuff like that so tell us about that uh, uh, let, let me begin with the part with Marcilla my wife so like I said after Cyril Jegu introduced me to the system and I have been using the system there she was hey our kids are all grown up you know I've stopped sending them to school I don't need to visit them in university anymore the graduation ceremonies are all done attended and she is sewing and doing quilts and doing soap and home improvement projects and and she saw me more focused and said can you help me do that too huh what I remember many of my mentors said you can never coach your spouse but she she pleaded with me she said no no she didn't plead with me she requested me yeah, I, I think you're doing something that is more focused can you help me get focused so it began in 2016 the first year that yeah, we in January 2016 uh, we want to have it okay Hassan came from corporate it must be an off-site retreat we went to Malacca uh, holiday in Malacca and we sat down and I used the methodology uh, at that time I was not trained yet by Ginny Shabrino I used the same worksheets at the at the back of this book with her and help get through what is it that's holding her back what is it that she intends to achieve in 12 months time and what are some of the action plans and and uh, that that was it yeah, so the first year we had our quarterly retreats chuti chuti malaysia uh, it was a combination of we need to get out and have a holiday even if it's a four day three night or shorter could be three days two night we combine of uh, we combine the session as us having a vacation plus a sit down of her reflecting on what she'd done in the past three months and what she plans uh, in the next three months uh, in reference to the whole year's plan uh, that she had created for herself so that's fine uh, so, okay, so this this is a uh, sorry Hassan, so is this a recent development or it was it sounds a, like it's a recent development when you, you discovered the best year yet practice it was it was 2015 has, it, has this been going on? okay so it's pretty recent okay yeah 2015 yeah 2015 and in 2016 she began uh, to use the system uh, with my guidance uh, which which debunks the saying that you cannot coach your spouse 
So I don't necessarily call it coaching. It's just called helping and brainstorming with her. Uh, but 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 that's not the the best part. Right. Uh, towards the end of 2016, I went to the US for further training certification of the system, so as that then I can not just only coach one to one with people. I could do a group of people of individuals having different goals, but yet in a group setting in a workshop, then they can come up with their plan, and I could provide follow on sessions for them to monitor and implement their plan, get their lessons learned and readjust and get them to the final year's plan. As well as that, I got certified to be able to do it to a team. A team will have common goals, common mission, uh, common action plans that are done uh, depending on who plays the role in the team. Uh, okay, that's fine. But my wife said, hmm, so you can do team planning, yeah? But we are a team, Abang. Uh, you and I, we are a team. Can you do our team plan? Let's call it a couple plan. <laughs> so that was at the end of 2016. In my heart, what? Hey, you are having your own plan. I have my professional and personal plan. Uh, let's stick, uh, stick this way. So I said to her, no, 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 we're not ready. You go on doing your personal plan and I'll help you another year. Uh, we're not ready. Maybe next year. And she was disappointed. But, but let me tell you the truth, yeah? Men's brief, right? <laughs> the truth, what? What? If we do a team plan, a couple plan, then I really need to think uh, that joint goal is it something that I can do too? That I want to? We are fine doing things on our own jointly, undocumented. You know, all the 30 over years of marriage, uh, we were doing things together, but we never documented or write down to commit something that we need to do together what if that's something I want to do together with her is something that I'm not committed to do then I need to pretend then I need to uh, I could have pretended before but now we're going to put it on paper or type it into the computer and review it every three months oh no <laughs> the truth was uh, the man in me said nah nah nah, nah. I'm, uh, it's not that we're not ready I was not ready about Omar, Jack. Yeah, I have a question for you. Uh, as a, oh, sorry, you continue? Yeah, go on and ask first because I'll continue. Yeah, because a lot of your sharing uh, earlier, that has been when you left the corporate. Yeah, you mentioned around when you were still working and um, your wife decided to resign after working for 10 years. What about when before that? You know, when, when your wife was working and you was working, perhaps also uh, climbing the corporate ladder and, you know, like um, achieving your aspiration back then. How was family support um, has been, had been given you that significant um, contribution in terms of your well-being or rather your process of achieving those success back then? Well, uh then there were more players, uh, like I said, and there could be institutions like uh, the kindergarten and other centers that would need to take care of the kids. Or there were also a string of pembantu, you know, mates or helpers that we hired and then they were being not nice to the kids. We had to fire and replace them. So there were a string of helpers also. Uh, so I, I think that's pretty normal of many families. We went through that, and uh, during that initial 10, 20 years of the rat race <laughs> of needing to buy a car, buy a house, upgrade the car, uh, get a bigger house. So uh, there's nothing special about that. Uh, but I, I believe that the decision, especially volunteered by her, that she stopped work. Uh, was one of the pivotal moments of our marriage that has allowed us to bring up our kids to the level that they are today. Uh, but in the early years, uh, we, we, were, we were doing our best and uh, trying to juggle between mm, having helpers, uh, sending them to centers, getting the extended family's help, uh, like brothers and sisters, 
my mother was still alive then her mother was still alive then her brothers and sisters we needed to pull uh, many many helpers from the extended family too so the extended family is also a very important part we believe in the success of the central core family unit uh, up till this day we celebrate the extended family uh, when there are birthdays this house usually becomes the center we might combine three four people in the adjoining months and have one big celebration so celebrating the extended family is our way also of giving back for what they provided us in the early years as well as in the ongoing years uh, we alone as a core family uh, could not have done it alone we needed to get support from extended family too but this this goes both ways omar the the retreat that you said that you described was at a uh, Kuala Selangor retreat this was us Masila was the organizer because she was the best event organizer in the world and I was like I didn't use the word coach I was like the helper advisor getting a couple of sisters in law so this is part of the extended family members uh, we, we even help our extended families in their issue resolution so uh, so so we are known to not just be a, a family of our own we are also known to be giving to the extended family so in, in the early years it was a lot of receiving from them but in the years that Masila was not working anymore then we could give back and up till now we we it is both ways we help them they help us so keep the extended family as part of the strong network of support yeah, what I can get from that is really around uh, mutual understanding um, because um, coming, well, I know your wife a little bit, um, you know, for her to have decided to let go her career back then, I think it's the most, like you said, it's the same, exactly this, um, the, the, the point where everything started to to become organized, right? So, yeah. So, uh, Omar? Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm um, curious now to know um, how has it been for your family now since you've implemented um, a lot of this, um, uh, you know, meetings, family meetings. So, uh, I, I suppose your family is closer right now uh, in doing in, uh, because of that. Right, but what's, what are some of the things that you guys uh, discuss? Are you talking about Hari Raya or are you talking about, um, uh, you know, um, education for the grandchildren? What is it that you guys uh, uh, discuss? And on okay. top of that, perhaps I'll also add on some question around that. Um, because this practice of meeting and, you know, having this um, family discussion, perhaps your kids are very much open in terms of sharing uh, their life, uh, which perhaps uh, if you compare with other family, those kids yeah. will not be openly enough to discuss with their parents. So perhaps something that, that's happening in your family. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I'll get to all those answers, but let me take on from what Jack observed. Uh, the lesson learned is there must be that understanding, right? So this understanding is based on the foundation that a woman is different from a man and yet equal and the same. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but there are differences of roles that we can play. So like I already said, Masila is the best event organizer in the world for trips, for vacations, for family events. Uh, it's innate in her. So. Uh, I give that to her. Yeah? Uh, I could be better in some other things, so that uh, she gives it to me. So, so the understanding is based on what role we play to complement each other. So that there is a need to to find and acknowledge and accept. And if I'm not good in event management, so be it. If I'm not good at map reading, for example, when we go on vacations. I don't do the ways thing, 
the planning of where to go for the sightseeing or interesting places to go to uh, she does all that uh, she can know the ways to go the, uh, by uh, uh, and this I don't understand she says she knows places because she sees things from an aerial view uh, once she's gone through roads she doesn't have to look at maps and ways anymore because she she as if she's a bird or a plane she can see Wow. I, I don't understand that so uh, that could be her gift uh, so when it comes to map reading those days when we travel to the rest of the world without the GPS we open maps it's all hers yeah so, uh, so, so, so what is it that she is better in that I hands down and drop my ego and say you do that I am a follower yeah? and what is it that I'm good at better at that uh, hands down she will say I'm the follower so understanding is based on just acknowledging and accepting if I'm not good at that yeah no big deal yeah. and, and as we we raise our kids to observers like that this kind of role playing yeah uh, is Hana better than Adina is Amina better or worse now nah. uh, we, we have different limitations and roles that somehow in the last yeah, yeah Hana and Adi in their 30s now uh, in the last 30 over years somehow we gel and, and look at uh, what roles to play and the roles can be leading role join roles or follower role uh, just accept uh, so, so that openness that you were saying Jack uh, includes in, in, in this acceptance of uh, we do different things we like different things so we don't fight over it but we acknowledge it and and, and this thing about Will the kids be open to me also, to the mama and papa? Uh, it goes both ways. <laughs> because if papa, uh, right now when they are in the 30s, goes to them with difficult decision-making issues of changing career and whatnot, even you know telling all the, the gory stuff that I needed to go through to make the decisions or the factors to make the decisions, so that, that, that opens the way for them also uh, to be daring enough, to be bold enough to tell uh, their deeper concerns about their life. Uh, so so that's, uh, that, that's to get to the openness. If I'm open, if my wife and I are open to them, we don't see why not we, we have them also open up to us. Because so this so, 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 is the creation of an open environment. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, tr I'm trying to get to Omar's question. He's asked twice, what do you discuss? But before that, let me continue the other story. So at the end of 2016, at the early of 2017, I said, what? You want us to do a couple plan? No way, Jose. I'm, I'm not going to be able to commit to what I don't want to do. But since I said, mm, we'll do it next year. <laughs> Come the end of 2017, as we got into 2018, January 2018, we were closing Masila's 2017 plan, beginning to plan into 2018 for Masila. Whereas mine, I done it with my coach. And then I remember, I promised her a year ago that we'll do a couple of plans. So at that retreat at Jandabai, amongst the forest in the dark of the night, I said, remember last year you asked for a couple of retreat? We're ready now. <laughs> so before she catches me and asks me again, I said, we're ready now, so let's do it. <laughs> so that gender by retreat, uh, we didn't have enough time to start a couple retreat. So a week later, we went to Bukit Tinggi, the Coma Tropical, and uh, I went through the same types of questions and whatnot to put it in a couple setting. What is it that we are jointly holding back eh, as a couple? What is it that we want to be different this year? So for the first time in 36 years, we were talking we and documenting it. <laughs> Horror! It was, it was a massive experience and shock for me. But what I discovered was she was actually in the discussion, giving ideas and coaching me, asking questions about me for the two of us. What shocked me and surprised me, I had underestimated 
that she is also a coach in her being. There were deep, insightful questions and suggestions she made that made our first couple plan <laughs> solid. So it wasn't me alone who was a coach. She was jointly coaching me and us as a couple too. Whoa! Once I went through that, why did I not do it one year earlier? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just that I was holding back. I was fearing. I was egotistic about it. And, and from then program, on, that kind of program uh, open that to public. <laughs> you can experience that. Upon request, yeah. Why not? <laughs> but A couple, huh? Jack, I think we've got a question uh, from one of the viewers. Um, right. I believe Irene is your friend. Yes. Uh, yeah, she finds the book interesting, so she wants to know where she can get one. Oh yeah. <laughs> what book? What book? The uh, best year yet. I ordered it from Kino. <laughs> so there you go, Kino Kunia. You can get it online. Irene is from Sabah. Uh, Kino Kunia has got an online bookstore. You can uh, buy from that bookstore, Kino Kunia. But if you happen to be in KL, you can straight away go to Kino Kunia in KLCC. <laughs> Answering on behalf of uh, Hassan. Yeah, Hassan, this oh, uh, to me. Yeah, go on. When, when you were this, um, sharing all those uh, practices, best practices that you have, uh, that came from the understanding or rather you have something to use you've learned techniques you've learned um you know tools to do that so i'm wondering for those who doesn't for those who do not have i mean couples who do not have or family do not have this kind of uh, exposure where can they start how they can understand each other i mean of course there are many ways to understand each other but in this context of getting fam well having family support in achieving what what you intended yeah. to achieve in life so yeah in that kind of context okay i'm gonna go like i did last time in three months ago when i was a guest step one <laughs> step, okay. step, step one is to jointly create a plan so that you can understand each other better but there is a step zero the step zero was what i described earlier the man <laughs> throw away your man's ego that uh, it's hard to work with uh, the spouse uh, uh, there are things we cannot do together there are things i cannot commit so step zero is to realize and even write down and not just leaving it in the head uh, potentially what is it that we can do together we can commit together and also be clear about what is it that no way i'm going to do this uh, such that when you arrive at that uh, step one of planning you not only have the inclusion list of what we can do together, achieve together, have a certain behavior and attitude together, but there should also be an exclusion list. Yeah? This one, I'm not with you there. I don't like rock music. I don't like rock music, okay? I just like... <laughs> I don't like Korean drama. Uh, yeah, Korean drama, say. Uh, go and look for the common things. So when you go to step one, yeah, focus on those possibilities, uh, defocus on those things and be clear that uh, this one really, I don't want to get involved. Uh, you you go and do your girl stuff or you do and go and do your man stuff. <laughs> your, your, your reunion, your school reunion, thank you. <laughs> I know it'd be good for me to go, but I get bored. So, uh, no, 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 you do your stuff. So let that be part of your personal plan and not in the joint plan. Uh, uh, but. Uh, more often than not, you discover, especially when you're doing it for the first time, you know, just do a few of common things and don't worry about the uncommon things. Yeah? So step zero is to start talking and seeing which are the areas of common interest and common objectives and common destination in a year from now or six months from now. Um, I, I would advise not to go into three years, five years. Yeah. <laughs> you never know, another COVID or a different kind of thing will come that makes your three-year plan, three-year intention 
uh, go to nothing. So just think in terms of six months to 12 months, uh, start uh, the annual planning or the year's plan to be small few items first. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It's really going back to the fundamental um, of us uh, understanding each other and finding out what we have in common. Really love that. It's so powerful. In fact, not only in family, but in our everyday life encounters with others. I think that's really the starting point of you getting to be lighter around what's happening around the world is to understand how we can have that um, the same level of starting point. So in this sense, it's that common common interest or common understanding. So Omar, we are at our at the end of our program, really. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, last one from me. I I I has been very valuable. I think um, uh, the what I'm hearing is that if you have uh, this kind of a um, practice of an open communication um, uh, culture in the family, it creates uh, not just harmony, but it creates a stronger bond, uh, in, uh, you know, within the family, uh, including the extended family. And this is simply awesome. And I think, you know, come to think of it, um, planning with someone, uh, your spouse or your family, is probably more doable than plan making your own plans. <laughs> I mean, I make my own plans and I change them, right? But when you have a, when you have a group making the plans, you kind of like, um, uh, you know, work off each other to make sure that it works, right? To make yeah. sure that you stick to the plan, yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. Account, accountable to someone oh, else. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's expectations. Yeah, Sorry. and the weightage around if it's led by the man, or in this case, is the husband or the father, it becomes more interesting for everyone to be part of. I, I don't know, that's what I feel. Because it's like, you know, like, let's do, it, let's, let's do this together. And my father is really understanding of me. And that makes it more believable, credible. <laughs> the practice yeah. is more credible in that sense. So I think for all men out there, I like when Hassan mentioned that, okay, slow down those egos. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we don't have, we all have it. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, I think it's knowing the direction. And um, yeah, it, it's really what they want to achieve at the end of the day. Right? So, Hassan, um, perhaps a words of encouragement for um, all the men's minds out there. Yeah. Uh, it depends on what background and what we are comfortable with. Because I was trained as a corporate man, uh, went through training, coaching, uh, uh, sorry, trainings on training, trainings on coaching, trainings on facilitating. So you would see me uh, comfortable with using tools like hey, even a flip chart. <laughs> you know that uh, tropical, uh, Col Colma Tropical first couple plan that we did together. I even bought a very lightweight flip chart stand and flip chart paper that we did. But this may be too shocking in different situations. If if you are used to discussion and writing down on a piece of paper or typing, yeah, yes. uh, the, 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 the word is go with what you're comfortable with. All these artificial introductions of tools like a flip chart and whatnot, yeah, might just jar the situation that, huh, are we going to school or are we going to a, 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 a committee meeting or what? You know? So do it in the most natural way, in bed, on the sofa, at a holiday, but a lot of time, uh, if, if you're not so structured like me, that it must be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then we have lunch, uh, intersperse it. Yeah. So make it natural. Eh? Uh, life is not that you know jagged and structured, but if the intention is for better understanding, uh, better going through the journey together. You know, notice, don't use the word planning and strategic retreats. Yeah, just find the simple words that do it step by step in your most comfortable way. Uh, then the understanding will come out. But start with the intention that, and like I said. There's nothing like the family being the center of the unit, of the community, 
of nations of the world of the universe if i begin with that then i have the intention that to support my mission of doing good being in service to others being in service to god where can i find the foundation this my wife and family and then also the extended family plus afterwards uh, the friends that i have like the two of you and the many friends i have all over the world so that's that's me that's really beautiful all right so thank you so much hasan and i'd like to acknowledge our i'd like to acknowledge our audience and a few viewers regular viewers here uh, salim thank you hasan such an honor for you to share your experience with us you're welcome yeah and um, i'm seeing also quite a number of regular viewers thank you so much once again uh, thank you so much for your support and we do have we do have a few um more episodes in the next uh, couple of days for this week i will announce um as usual uh, this week we'll have our friday our sorry wednesday series and probably also thursday or friday series right so thank you so much ladies and gentlemen we'll see you again soon in our upcoming episode so thank you and good night everyone Bye.